So a couple of months ago, um, <clears throat> I went to my therapist, and um, I had neglected for a while getting my hair cut. Um, and she actually complimented me on my hair, and we had a, a good talk. I didn't really have anything to complain about at that time, um, it, you know, going on in my life. And um, <clears throat> I know that's a completely random introduction to this subject, but probably because of that, um, I actually decided to just let my hair keep growing. Normally, I keep it really short. Um, I prefer it short. I don't think that longer hair... Uh, works for me, but um, I haven't cut it since then except to clean it up a little bit around the back and sides. Um, and something strange occurred to me um, just a couple of days ago, which I think may be a sign that um, I need my upcoming therapy appointment, or um, it's just something to think about. Um, so I've been thinking increasingly more creatively um, and what I like to do is paint and write um, fiction in particular doing those things going through those creative processes make me feel happy they make me feel like I am um, experiencing life as I should be um, and so in general those are therapeutic for me in a sense because otherwise um, I get very frustrated when I'm not thinking creatively when my imagination isn't strong. Um, and as I said just a couple days ago, um, it occurred to me as my, I, I, I was looking um, at some of uh, Leonardo da Vinci's work and I saw him and he had very, very long hair, and it um, struck me, and he had a very long beard, and I started thinking about what a creative genius he was. Um, now, obviously, he's he's probably one of, he's definitely one of the greatest thinkers of um, recorded history, um, and certainly there's no comparison uh, between me and him, um, and also, you know, between most other people and him. But I, I looked up great thinkers, um, and of course the list that came up were almost entirely men, um, which has some problems in and of itself. But um, So I started um, looking up these men one at a time. Um, Albert Einstein, Thomas Jefferson, um, George Washington, obviously these lists were American-made. Um, but... Uh, Pretty much, almost without exception, um, these men had long hair, and usually very long or bushy beards also. Um, I do not think that I'm going to try growing a beard for this experiment, but um, or to explore this idea. But it, it was a thought that occurred to me because um, then I started thinking back to the biblical story um, of Samson and Delilah. Samson lost his strength when his hair was cut. And um, lately I've been watching these TV shows about bygone civilizations and the technologies that they may have possessed to build the pyramids and things like that um, with great precision. And I started thinking, um, and, and so those often, uh, you know, will address biblical stories or other mythological stories and um, discuss the, how they may have some basis in reality. And I certainly wasn't thinking that there was any reality to this idea, but just for the heck of it, um, I typed into Google um, long hair, and I started typing intuition, and long hair and intuition just popped up as a top search item. So that alone um, I thought was really interesting. Apparently, the, because that automatically filled in and it was the first thing that filled in, that means a lot of other people are looking up this idea. Um, and then it, it it really makes sense if you think about the fact that um, through long hair is associated, um, at least in Western culture, generally with um, femininity, with women. Um, another aspect associated with women, uh, an immaterial one, is intuition. Everybody knows about women's intuition. It's very famous. Um, and... So as I was thinking about this, I'm thinking these, these, you know, obviously there were different um, styles and fashions in 
bygone days. And so any kind of great thinker, um, at their time, it was more fashionable probably to have longer hair. Um, Albert Einstein certainly was not a beacon of fashion. And when he had his crazy long hair, um, it wasn't um, probably very in vogue, but nevertheless, he had it. And it's, it's just curious that there are a lot of really crazy looking great thinkers and they have long hair. Also, that long hair is associated with um, women and we associate intuition with women as well. Uh, so as I looked at a couple um, of items that came up after that, um, there, this page came up from an American Indian website um, and I will put a link here, but I also will just read a little bit about it because I thought it was very um, interesting. Uh, it's called The Truth About Hair and Why Native Indians Should Keep Their Hair Long. Um, and so basically there's a little anecdote told. Um, in the early 90s, Sally, name changed to protect privacy, was married to a licensed psychologist who worked at a VA medical hospital. He worked with combat veterans with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Most of them had served in Vietnam. Sally said, I remember clearly an evening when my husband came back to our apartment on Doctor's Circle, carrying a thick, official-looking folder in his hands. Inside were hundreds of pages of certain studies commissioned by the government. He was in shock from the contents. When he read those documents, what he read in those documents completely changed his life. From that moment on, my conservative, middle-of-the-road husband grew his hair and beard and never cut them again. What is more, the VA Medical Center let him do it, and other very conservative men in the staff followed his example. As I read the documents, I learned why. It seems that during Viet the Vietnam War, special forces in the War Department had sent undercover experts to comb American Indian reservations looking for talented scouts for tough young men trained to move stealthily through the terrain. They were especially looking for men with outstanding, almost supernatural tracking abilities. Before being approached, and then there's some weird break in the text, but... um. Once enlisted, an amazing thing happened. Whatever talents and skills they had possessed on the reservation seemed to mysteriously disappear as recruit after recruit failed to perform as expected in the field. This was after they had had their hair cut. Serious casualties and failures of performance led the government to contract, contract expensive testing of these recruits, and this is what was found. When questioned about their failure to perform as expected, the older recruits replied consistently that when they received their required military haircuts, they could no longer sense the enemy. They could no longer access a sixth sense. Their intuition was no longer reliable. They couldn't read subtle signs as, w as well or access subtle extrasensory information. So the testing institute recruited more Indian trackers let them keep their hair long, and tested them in multiple areas. They, then they would pair the two men together who had received the same scores on all tests. They would let one man in the pair keep his hair long and gave the other man a military haircut. Then the two men retook the test. Time after time, the men with long hair kept making higher scores. Time after time, the man with the shorter hair failed the test in which he had previously scored scored high scores. So the point is um, that according to this alleged document from the time of the Vietnam War, um, there was governmental research um, suggesting that longer hair improves intuition. And what's interesting about that to me is um, just thinking about the biological, um, you know, physiological nature of who we are. We grow hair. We cut it off. Um, we know that, you know, whiskers on animals um, are actually sensory organs. Um, they are on cats. You would never, well, I mean, unless you're really evil, you would never cut off a cat's whiskers. Um, catfish, um, they have uh, something called barbels that are on the sides of their mouths that are basically fleshy whiskers that let them pick up um, electrical signals. So we know that 
hair, um, when it gets long enough, can actually generate static electricity um, because it becomes um, staticky and frizzy in you know dry environments where the hairs are rubbing together. So then, you know, it just stands to reason um, that hair may actually increase some kind of electrical signal or um, transpondence or something. Um, so it, it's just something to think about. Um, I'm not planning on letting my hair get really long and growing a beard or anything, but it's now it's about as long um, as it's ever been, uh, although I don't you know, wear it down in my face. Um, also, it's, it's just also maybe a little bit interesting that um, emo guys in the 80s and then again in the 2000s uh, have longer hair. It's associated with being emo, which is emotional. And along with those emotions, um, we can probably assume there would be um, a greater intuition or more interest in being intuitive. So um, just something to think about. I, again, I'm my mind is working in overdrive, could be a sign that I need to go um, on a new medication or something, but I don't think so. I think I'm just being, my creative output is improving. Um, I have all these ideas about things that I want to paint. I have various different things that I'm interested in writing right now, and I'm just having a hard time keeping up with all of these ideas. Um, and does it have anything to do with having longer hair? I don't know. Uh,